So we have here a simple application. It's already set to work with Alta, and we have a department and employees data control. And we're going to create a new page using the tablet first template. So this is the template that we use for Alta base pages. And I'm going to work in the source uh, editor. It's a little bit faster this way. Um, first thing I'm going to do is set a few properties for the template. So in my sample, we don't actually need an end width. And uh, I'm going to allocate a little bit more to the start width because this is where we're going to show the navigation menu. Okay, and now we're going to work in the navigation, in the start area, and we're going to bring in a deck component in here. Okay, and then inside the deck, I'm going to drop two panel group layouts. Okay, so actually there's a bug here in the demo that I did. They actually got dropped outside of the deck, but you should put them inside. Okay, I fixed it later on. And note they are called PGL1 and PGL2. Those are the IDs of those. Uh, panel groups. We're going to into our data control. We have department and employees, and we're dragging the departments, and we're going to place it inside the first uh, panel group layout, and we're putting it as a list component, and we're using the grid layout here, one row with two columns. One of them would occupy 80% of the space, and the other one 20. So the 20 is where we're going to put the image, and the 80 is where we're going to show the department's name. Like that. So this actually got put again in the wrong panel group layout, so let's just move it inside the other one. So panel group layout one is where we're showing the departments. Okay. And you can see here are the two columns, and we're going to drag an image into the second one. This would basically be an arrow that indicates to people you can drill down from here. Okay. So this is the first one. Let's do the second one. So we're taking the employees and dropping it into the second panel group layout. Again, we're going to drop it as a list view. And again, use the grid layout, the uh, two columns, one row, and the 80-20%. So basically just repeating what we did with the departments. Here we're going to show the name of the employee. And again, in the second column, we're going to place an image. So now we have our two list views. What we want to do now is make sure that in the first list view, we actually enable selection, so people can actually select. You probably want to do it also for the second one. Now, usually when you turn on selection, the next step is to go to the selection listener and um, choose over there and, um, from the existing binding. Okay, you want the make current row option. Okay, this thing. This would actually select the specific row you're on. But in our case, we want to select this row but we also want to switch something in the UI. So to do that, we're going to create a new managed bin. Okay, we'll call it managed bin three, because this is untitled three. So again, you probably want some more meaningful names for your files. And we're going to create a method in here called depth select. So this is the method that is going to be invoked when we select a department in our list. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add binding for the deck component into our, the same manage bin. So this means that we have access to the deck component in our manage bin. Here's our manage bin. Right now it has the method we created and the option to get our deck component and set properties for it if we need to. So for the deck component, we going to specify that it's going to display the first panel group layout over here. So this would show the department. And then when we'll select the department, we're going to need to switch it to show the second panel group layout. So this is a little bit of code that I'm going to copy over. And you can get it from the blog entries that come with this video. And in this code, we're doing actually two things. The first thing is we're actually executing the make current row method okay, of our 
um, collection. So basically actually selecting the department. And then the second, the last two lines are actually switching the deck to show the second panel group layout and then doing a partial page render to actually reflect this deck change. So this is what we're doing when we're clicking and selecting a department. Now we're going to work in the second panel group and we're going to uh, bring in the department name into there. So we're showing their employees and we want to know employees of which department we're showing. So I'm just dropping this as a output text component, but what I actually want to have here is a button. Okay. And this button will allow me to navigate back to the list of departments. So for the text on this button, I'm going to show the name of the department I'm currently watching. So I'll just paste it over here. And then in the action listener for this one, so when we press the button, I'm going to again go to the same manage bin, create a new method. So this method would be the back uh, to department method. And what I'm going to do there is very simply um, just set the panel, set the deck to show the other, the other panel group layout. So we remove the extra output text component, copy the two lines of code here for the panel group layout, paste it in the back and switch it to show panel group layout one. If you want to have nice animation in your deck when you're um, transferring between the two menus, you want to include inside the deck the transi transition tag. Okay, so we're going to have one for the forward navigation and one for the back navigation. So this is the navigation between the two panel group layouts. Okay. And we're going to set the type of transition to be a slide. So slide to the left when we go forward and slide to the right when we go backwards. One more thing that we want to do for the button in order to make it look a little bit nicer is to use the AF app nav bar button style class. And we're going to also include an icon on the button in addition to the text that will have the backward arrow. All right, let's save and run our page. So when the page comes up, we see a list. When we select something, we go to the next level and then we can go back. So every department has the employees, then we can go back. So that's the concept. Um, let me show you something that is a little bit more refined. Um, so if you do a little bit more of UI work, you can get to this level. Well, again, the functionality is the same. A few things to notice. If there aren't any details, there's no arrow on the right side. And you can also see the way that we're trying to keep the structure the same across all the list with the details about the next level at the top.